Today we're speaking with Dr. Powell Brown. He is professor and chairman of the Department of Clinical Cancer Prevention at the University of Texas MD, Ander MD Anderson Cancer Center. He is also on the editorial board for Cancer Prevention Research, a journal of the AACR. Thank you for joining us. Oh, sure. Thanks. We spend so much time looking at metastatic disease, but we don't hear a lot about early detection of breast cancer. What are we doing to look at the early detection of breast cancer? So sure, there's clearly an interest in early detection. Um, and actually, it's been in the news a bit. Uh, mammography is our standard approach. And there's been a big debate on whether mammography should be started at 40 or at 50, and whether it should be done annually or maybe every other, every other year. Uh, at MD Anderson, our standard policy is to offer mammography in, in average Jewish women from age 40 uh, and above, and each year. Now, it's also known that mammography, while it does pick up many breast cancers, doesn't pick up all of breast cancers. So there's, a, there's really a, an urgent need for something that even is more effective than mammography. So the first one of those is MRI. Um, certainly people get MRIs of their bodies. We're now doing breast MRIs to look for early uh, breast lesions that might be cancer. And it's been shown that breast MRI is even more sensitive than mammography to pick up um, early cancers. Now, breast MRI is not for everyone. It's a very expensive test. And for most people, it may not be necessary. So we really reserve that for the highest risk women. But that's one thing that's available now for the very high risk people. Secondly, there's a lot of interest in developing other ways to detect breast cancer, either other imaging tests, so ultrasound is sometimes used, and there are even exp uh, research studies to identify whether the electrical impedance in the breast might tell you you have a breast cancer. Those are research areas. Then finally, maybe the most exciting area in, in early detection is using blood markers and trying to find a good blood test that could tell you if you had breast cancer sort of akin to using uh, prostate cancer blood test, the PSA test, although that one's not really uh, a perfect test either. Uh, there's a huge effort to define blood markers that could tell if somebody had breast cancer. That's in the research area and something AACR is probably very interested in, but a lot of progress is being made there. It's not ready for prime time, but uh, hopefully in the next few years it might be. Would you discuss how growth factors and hormones <laughs> induce changes in gene expression that lead to the development of breast cancer? Sure. Um, most everybody knows that breast cancer is somehow related to uh, hormones and particularly estrogen. So the most important hormone in terms of genesis of breast cancer as well as in the treatment of breast cancer is estrogen and its estrogen receptor. Medicines that block the effects of estrogen on the estrogen receptor are now used to treat breast cancer and they're also now shown to prevent breast cancer as well. So if we block the estrogen receptor and block hormones effect on it, the estrogen's effect on it, uh, we can actually reduce the risk of breast cancer in people that are high risk. Um, one problem is that not all breast cancers express the estrogen receptor. Only about uh, 60 to 70 percent of breast cancers are hormonally responsive and express the estrogen receptor. So given that, the remaining 30 or 40 percent um, are driven by other growth factors. And there's a lot of research and also sponsored by the ACR that uh, is examining those other growth factors. One that we know of is the HER2 or ERB2 oncogene. When that's overexpressed, it sends a growth signal to the breast cells telling them to grow. And in fact, that's now a target for a treatment of ERB2 or HER2 new overexpressed breast cancer. And the antibody uh, trasducimab blocks that signal and is a useful treatment for breast cancer. And there are other drugs that are now being asked whether you could block that same signal and, and prevent breast cancer. Finally, there are other growth factors and their receptors that signal um, growth and progression of breast cancer. Some of those are the insulin-like growth factor or otherwise known as IGF and then other uh, factors such as the Wnt protein and uh, fiberglass growth factor. All of those are potential targets and potential um, growth signaling molecules that are regulating growth of breast cancer. So those all ultimately cause gene expression changes in a breast cell 
telling the breast cell to grow or tell the breast cell to invade or metastasize. So if we can block those signals, we can both treat breast cancer and ultimately our goal is to prevent it altogether. Could you speak a little bit about your work to develop and test novel strategies for the prevention of breast cancer? Sure. I, I mentioned early that uh, trying to target the estrogen receptor is an effective way to prevent breast cancer. But for those breast cancers that don't express it, that 30 or 40 percent of them, we really have no good preventive strategy. And in fact, as we heard today in, the, in our meeting today, the most effective strategy for breast cancer prevention for those types of breast cancer is unfortunately bilateral prophylactic mastectomy or surgical approach. And there's huge interest in trying to develop ways to prevent the estrogen receptor negative breast cancer without having to use surgery. So our research is really focused at trying to find ways to prevent all forms of breast cancer, the hormonally responsive as well as the hormonally non-responsive. And we are investigating the signaling pathways, the molecules that are in, present in these estrogen receptor negative cells that might be targeted for the treatment of breast cancer as well as its prevention. And in fact, I'm happy to say that we have a lot of really excellent candidates. We've already been able to show that we can prevent estrogen receptor negative breast cancer in mice using various drugs, and we're bringing those to clinical trial. So I think there's a lot of promise uh, on, on the horizon here to have ways to prevent both estrogen receptor positive, and we're already there, or, or in addition to the estrogen receptor negative breast cancer too. Could you discuss some of the known external risk factors for breast cancer that women can purposely modify to reduce their risk? Sure. Everybody's interested in trying to reduce their risk of breast cancer. And um, some of these risks of breast cancer cannot be modified. One of the most well-known breast cancer risks is your family history or your genetics. If you carry the gene that causes breast cancer, if that's mutated, you can't alter that. Uh, someone, that's a um, risk factor that you can't do much about. On the other hand, there are external factors that put you at risk of breast cancer. One of them is your estrogen exposure. Now again, most women can't control their lifelong endogenous estrogen exposure. This is the amount of estrogen that your body's produced and that have been uh, exposing your breast to that level of estrogen. But exogenous forms of estrogen, if you take hormones, and particularly postmenopausal hormones, that is a form of estrogen exposure that is uh, modifiable. So in the last uh, three to five years, it's been a, uh, appreciated that high exposure to estrogen and progesterone as postmenopausal hormones uh, increase women's risk of breast cancer. That finding caused women to stop using that and then actually we saw a reduction in the incidence of breast cancer after stopping the hormones. So hormone use is one. In addition, there's a lot of interest in using diet and possibly exercise to reduce your risk of breast cancer. And we're getting much more information about that frankly, is being presented at the ACR meeting both here and last year. Um, at, and, and those research findings suggest that exercise can affect one's both uh, survival from breast cancer, if you have it, your response to treatments, and now uh, there's some evidence to suggest, suggest that exercise might even reduce your risk of breast cancer. So in my own practice, I do recommend that women pursue a vigorous exercise program uh, for their overall health and also for their re reducing the risk of breast cancer. Now there's another area of interest which is nutrition and diet. Uh, clearly uh, that's a modifiable risk factor as well. The research suggests actually the biggest risk factor may be just being overweight or your total caloric uh, balance in terms of what you take in and in terms of what you burn through exercise. So. Uh, a modifiable risk factor includes uh, obesity. It's, there's an obesity epidemic in our country, and reducing obesity may well reduce the risk of breast cancer. So again, I recommend for, for the women that I see to uh, have a healthy diet, a healthy one and rich in fruits and vegetables, less in red meat, and to uh, avoid being overweight if possible, and reduce uh, weight if you happen to be overweight. Again, those are less clear as to how much that will reduce your risk, but certainly are good for your health and probably reduce risk of breast cancer. 
There's one more uh, modifiable risk factor that's important to mention, and that's alcohol. Um, alcohol intake does clearly increase one's risk of breast cancer. And unfortunately, even low levels of alcohol intake, as many as uh, three or, or five glasses of wine per week has been able to be detected, uh, does uh, detectably increase your risk of breast cancer. Not by much, uh, fortunately, but by little. So again, uh, if uh, a woman is using alcohol moderately or heavily, it might be wise to reduce their risk of breast cancer by lowering their alcohol intake. Um, as I say it for most people, uh, all of these things are a balance between risk and benefit. And I think one needs to weigh quality of life too. So certainly a glass of wine occasionally is an enjoyable thing that many people choose to do, but uh, at least they should be aware of moderate alcohol intake also increases your risk of breast cancer. Thank you so much, Dr. Oh, Brown. Sure. Well, I've enjoyed talking with you. Thank you. Thank you.